we're going to be taking a look at gameplay from one of my viewers, Deputy Rook. As he plays the match, I'll be on the lookout for key moments. Ah, uh, Raccoon City Police Department. This map could be a challenge for your particular killer. All these rooms and hallways are going to limit your chainsaw's mobility. Looks like you were tracking the tail end of those scratch marks. If we rewind here, you can catch a glimpse of Steve in the corner of your eye. That would have been an easy chainsaw kill if you'd saw him. Did you melee him there because you thought there was a pallet in the room? That would have been an easy chainsaw otherwise. Ah! There we go. That didn't take too long. Looks like Thrilling Tremors is giving you a hint about which gens you should focus on. Uh oh, there goes Tinker. Let's see if you can reach the gen before it pops using your chainsaw. Woo, just in the nick of time. You've been getting some nice value out of Pop Goes the Weasel so far. I'm pretty sure you're checking this area because you caught a glimpse of you and Jin as you were dashing down the hallway. may not be great for mobility. These narrow hallways leave survivors with little room to evade your chainsaw. Ooh, another tinker proc. Can you make it in time? It's a good thing you got Steve off the gen, but I feel like you missed an opportunity to use your chainsaw. Big brain play there, Steve. Really. Ah! 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 Oh, just a bit too slow getting there. It would probably have been a better idea to have broken the chase at this point. <laughs> that chase cost you a lot of time. At least you did eventually cut your losses. Good choice going for the injured player instead.
If they get that metal gen done, ooh, yeah. It's going to make your patrol route a lot harder. This guy has been giving you a lot of trouble. It might just be a better idea to let him go. These scratch marks made it look like Steve was behind the bookcase, but it appears he recognized it was an unsafe loop and he ran for the door instead. If you had begun charging your power one second before entering this room, you would have been able to down Steve before he reached the pallet. Ah! That would have been an easy down if you'd used your chainsaw. Thankfully, this is Steve's last hook. Getting him out of the game should make things easier for you. Looks like his teammates knew they needed to save him, but you didn't fall for their tricks. But you got the wall. Ah! Nice call, man. If you hadn't found him there, that gen would have popped. I'll give you a key for that game saving moment. Popko's the Weasel has really been saving you this game. Looks like Steve wants your attention. I think you could have gotten a chainsaw hit there to punish Steve for whatever it was he was doing. You fell for the window fake. If you had kept your view focused on the hallway rather than towards the wall, you would have been able to see it coming. Not sure why Steve ran to the right. He had a pallet and a window to his left. Oh well, 
Easier kill for you. Nice job picking up on that boon totem's humming, but oof, that dead hard really saved her there. <laughs> nice palette bait by Yoon Jin. <laughs> Thankfully, your enduring perk. Reduce the stun time enough to catch her before she reaches the next pallet. Why did Steve abandon the loop like that? He could have ran you around the bookcase at least once. Well, he's dead now. You really turned the game around, man. I thought for sure they'd get all the gens done. As for the hatch, yep, he got it. Ah well, three kills on a police department is hillbilly? Not a bad match. I think Deputy Rook showed a solid understanding of Dead by Daylight's game mechanics. He knew how to take advantage of his perks break a chase when it became too time consuming, and listen for audio cues to help him find survivors. He also had one key moment, where he managed to prolong the game by correctly guessing the hiding place of a survivor who was about to finish one of the final generators. However, Deputy Rook also made some misplays that impacted his performance, missing opportunities to use his chainsaw, losing track of a survivor during a chase, and falling for a window fake were all mistakes that reduced the pressure he was putting on the survivor team. But I'm confident that after watching this video, Deputy Rook will learn from these mistakes and improve. So thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe for future content.